Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be going to a very interesting place known as Omega Centauri. You're going to find out what it is, you're going to find out what's there and you're going to find out what it's all about. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So we're going to be leaving our planet Earth and go to a location known as Omega Centauri, also known as NGC 5139. This is actually the largest and the most massive globular cluster uh, close to our galaxy, or I guess in our galaxy, the Milky Way. And it is, as a matter of fact, so large that you can actually easily see it from a dark enough location on our planet Earth. Let's actually, let's actually do that right now. We're going to go back to Earth for a second. And uh, let's look for the cluster and then see what it looks like in Space Engine. So if I, if I go in here and if I type Omega Centauri, if I select it, it's right there. Now, this might not look like it's very big yet until I start increasing the luminosity. And as um, basically, as soon as I kind of zoom in a little bit, as soon as I just kind of increase my zoom a little bit, you'll see how big it is. This is actually very large. Um, in comparison to our moon, it's just a little bit smaller than the moon. And uh, for many, many years, since about 17th century, people have speculated about what exactly this was. And it was only in 20th century that we discovered that this was actually a very massive, very large globular cluster. This is me zooming in onto that cluster right now. Anyway, let's zoom out. Let's actually just go back. And uh, let's go there. It's at a distance of about 17.3 uh, thousand light years away from us. So we're going to zoom through the entire Milky Way or most of the Milky Way. And we're going to arrive to this globular cluster. That's actually very, very unusual. And it's unusual for several reasons. One of those reasons is that today we are almost certain that this globular cluster that you can kind of see right here, and I'm going to actually place it right in front of the Milky Way, so you can see Milky Way in the background as well. This global cluster is actually, or was actually, a dwarf galaxy. We think that this used to be the center of the dwarf galaxy that basically got kind of destroyed and sucked out uh, by the Milky Way, which then absorbed it into itself. In other words, this was a galaxy that got, uh, or that became a part of the Milky Way. And we think that there's at least one star very close to us, as a matter of fact, super close to us, that came from this, uh, that galaxy, from this global cluster. This star is known as a Captain Star, and we're going to talk about it in more detail later on in another video. But for now, we're going to actually focus on this global cluster. Uh, one of the reasons we think that this actually is not just a global cluster, but uh, possibly a dead or de declined or destroyed dwarf galaxy is because of uh, the amount of various types of stars on the inside. It has a very mixed population of stars, even though most of these stars are very old population two stars. For the most part, there's quite a lot of variety here. And most global clusters usually have similar stars. This one, however, has quite a tremendous amount of various different types of stars. And you'll see that as I fly through this, there's going to be so many different colors appearing. And so because of this, we think that this actually might be a dead galaxy. And because it's a dead galaxy, it's probably going to have a black hole in the middle. And so let's go and find this uh, intermediate black hole that we've kind of discovered a few years ago. Now, there's actually about 10 million stars here, and total mass is about 4 million solar masses. So there's a lot of stars to go through. There's a lot of mystery here. There's a lot of really cool stars that might have unusual planets on them. So, like, for example, let's go to this one right here. Let's just check it out very quickly and look at what the night sky looks like here as well. Because the distance between each of the stars on average is about 0.1 light years away. Remember, the closest star to us is about 4.3 light years away from us. That's um, Proxima Centauri. But here, the closest star would be pretty much uh, about 2 or maybe 3% of that distance. So here is an example of some kind of a um, blue luminous supergiant. 
that has several planets orbiting around it, and each of these planets looks amazingly beautiful and kind of blue. Let's, uh, let's see if any of these actually are colonizable. And actually, it looks like this last planet right here has a really comfortable temperature of 29 degrees Celsius, even though it's actually a gas giant. And it also seems to have a really, really interesting, very beautiful ring around it as well, which is actually pretty cool. So this gas giant might be colonizable, or at least some of its moons actually might be colonizable if we try to look through them by clicking on them individually and okay here is here's a very large moon and this moon has a temperature of 67 degrees celsius uh maybe a little bit hotter than it, than we're used to but definitely a moon that we could consider to be a colonizable object uh especially if we could somehow terraform it later on but interestingly here look at how beautiful the skies look how unusual this whole both surface and the night skies are so if you were to actually live here you would see a tremendous amount of light in the skies and the actual surface and the actual skies would be very very blue anyway so that's just a randomly generated star in a planet but that's not why we're here we're here to discover the black hole, the intermediate black hole in the center and uh, my arrow right there is pointing at where it probably is located so let's go and find it and um, we believe that there is definitely a black hole somewhere here because Hubble telescope detected some kind of an unusual very fast motion in the center of this cluster that could only be attributed to possibly an interaction with a massive black hole in the middle and if there is a black hole it's probably only about maybe 40 uh, thousand or somewhere around that uh, masses of our sun so it's not a super massive black hole it's more of an intermediate black hole and it's something that we uh, haven't really seen much of they are relatively rare oh here it is actually i think i found it let's accelerate time just to see if this is actually where it's located because it should... Oh, there we go. Yeah. It should show us some motion there. So there, there are those stars orbiting around a strange region in the center. And that's because there is a black hole right there in the middle. And we're going to come a little bit closer to it. Just so we can check it out as well. It's very, very bright here. Very beautiful, very bright. And let's go and find where this black hole is. So as a dwarf galaxy that was actually disrupted by um, our own galaxy it's quite possible that um, this is essentially how our galaxy was made it possibly just absorbed a lot of dwarf galaxies and became a supermassive galaxy that we know uh, of today now i can't really figure out where the black hole is because it's actually moving away from me for some reason so i'm gonna have to slow down time and try to approach it a little bit slower oh i think there it is yeah that's gotta be it there we go no maybe here there it is yeah black hole with 15 stars and the stars are located right there so we can actually just click on this button right here and it will approach the black hole automatically so let's come a little bit closer it's very very bright as you can see and there it is there it's spinning really really fast we're going to slow down time and this is actually in real time this is what it it looks like in real time look at this beautiful uh, intermediate massive black hole or a black hole of intermediate mass very very unusually looking and also very very mesmerizing so the actual accretion disk here moves really fast compared to the supermassive black hole in the center of our own galaxy each of the stars here is actually pretty interesting too and um, it seems that there is at least one black hole orbiting around this black hole there's actually a black hole right here that orbits around it this one is obviously a lot less massive but this is probably the reason why uh that other black hole is behaving so strangely and moving away from me so anyway so this is a very interesting system it's actually a very unusual globular cluster and we think that many globular clusters that we have in our um, galaxy today uh, may have actually had different origin from this one so even though many global clusters usually have all of their stars made at the same time, the stars in this global cluster were created um, at different times, which also once again suggests that this used to be just a galaxy and not really a global cluster.
Now, in one of the next videos, we're actually going to be talking about one star we know that possibly came from this global cluster, and it's actually very close to us at a distance of only about 12 light years. We'll talk more about why this star is actually quite interesting and quite incredible. But for now, though, let's just enjoy the beauty of the Omega Centauri, and let's explore just a little bit more of this particular system and this cluster. So I'm going to zoom out of here and let's maybe just do a bit of a search and try to find at least one planet that may have life on it. And so let's actually look for um, any kind of a star or I guess a, a system that has any life in a cellular or multicellular um, in the vicinity of this cluster, distance of about 150 light years away. Um, and that's essentially the radius of this cluster. So we're going to go through the systems and see if we find anything. And it looks like we've discovered some systems. This one is actually an orange dwarf. There's a few red dwarfs as well. And uh, they're at a distance of about 126 light years. Is that inside the system? Yeah, it is. Let's go check it out. So this here, a star on the outskirts of the Omega Centauri um, globular cluster has this planet right here, known as Planet 4, that has, uh, that is a temperate Oceania and has life. And its temperature is about 12 degrees Celsius. It has 1.56 atmospheric pressures on the surface and it has five moons. Look at that. We found life outside of our planet Earth, inside a global cluster of all places. And let's actually briefly check out uh, what this looks like. And I think it's actually just an ocean planet. I don't think I don't see any surface, so this must just have ocean life on it, as in life underneath the water, because there is, seems to be no continents here. But it does have five moons around it, which is actually really cool. Let's see if any of the moons here are uh, cool looking, or at least have similar appearance to our own moon. Oh wow, they actually have very different motion as well. But this moon right here moves really interestingly close, so let's maybe. Take a look at it before we finish this video, because uh, this is sort of the realm of science fiction by now, because maybe just maybe this planet doesn't actually exist at all. And for all we know, this globular cluster might be actually uh, poor in planets and might not have any planets at all. OK, this is just a rock. This is not fun. But overall, though, this system looks pretty amazing. There's at least one object with gas, um, uh, gas giant with rings, and at least one gas giant that has purple color. Isn't that cool? That's pretty cool. And this one has quite a lot of moons as well. Well, anyway, so that's all I wanted to show you in this video. I wanted to explore uh, the Omega Centauri global cluster. I wanted to give you a bit of an idea of why it's so cool and what we know about it. And in the next video, or one of the next videos, we're going to explore the star and the planet that actually came from here. Which is quite amazing by itself as well. Look at how strange these moons moon. These moons actually orbit in their own sort of way. This is pretty incredible. Anyway, let's escape this system. Let's escape this global cluster. And let's, uh, you know what, come back tomorrow to learn something else to learn another interesting concept that you may have not known about before. And subscribe if you still haven't. And you know what? I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye. And don't forget to share this video with someone who actually enjoys watching space videos or wants to learn through video games. And potentially support this channel Patreon as well. We're escaping our beautiful Milky Way and we're going away far, far away.